Hey guys, welcome back to the Popper Metagame. A little update here, just as a just as a bonus video. I already put a put a little bit of an episode update out earlier today, and this is a free bonus, free of charge. All right, well, all the videos are free of charge, but I wanted to let you know that I'm going to be doing a few articles. I don't know how many exactly. Uh, we'll start out doing a few and just see how it goes. But yeah, a few articles for Card Sphere which is an online trading tool. That's right, it is official. I am shilling for card sphere. Uh, don't worry, I am definitely not getting rich <laughs> on this deal. I'm actually just involved with it because I reached out to card sphere to see if I could do a little something as an amateur MTG finance person and they were like, yeah, they said they'd give me a chance, you know, let me do a few articles and see how it goes. So yeah, it's pretty cool. Anyway, enough of all that. Let me get back to shilling for card sphere. So here's how. Oh yeah, wait. First of all, you should also know that card sphere is not paying me a single nickel. They're giving me no benefits whatsoever that I can think of uh, for uh, plugging this on my YouTube channel. I'm just I'm just covering this because card sphere is awesome. More people should know about it. It's an awesome service that you should take advantage of. So what is it? Well, let me break this down into two categories of people. Those of you who are familiar with Puka Trade, and those of you who are not familiar with Puka Trade, uh, basically it's like Puka Trade, except not terrible. <laughs> okay, that that might be a little over the top. Anyway, the the, the reason I stumbled into cards here is because I wanted to be able to trade my physical cards and use the internet. Novel idea, I know. And I I've, I've started researching Puka Trade, but I was very nervous about all the things I was reading about people who were basically just getting ripped off. They would ship their cards out and get a bunch of Puka points and then those Puka points over time would become worth less and less and less and then you know they would want people to ship them cards but they wouldn't really be able to get much because of inflation and people not trusting the system so less actual good cards being shipped out and people just shipping a lot of junk and wow it's sounded pretty bad so frankly I didn't want to get involved in all that I was looking for something a little more reliable a little more stable something I could trust and then along comes Cardsphere I stumbled onto Cardsphere just roaming around the internet and thought I would try it out <coughs> and yeah it's been a fabulous experience uh, I think I deposited a I think I started out you, you can actually see I've only got like twenty dollars on my account right now but I started out depositing, I think, a couple hundred bucks. And yeah, I've been, you know, getting tons of cards sent to me. And all you got to do is you sign up, you create an account. And the way this works is you'll have two lists. You'll have, you can put all the cards in that you have. And you'll just kind of list and you can actually see what the, what card sphere is pricing them at. I think they use some kind of correlation to TCG player pricing. Not 100%, but it seems like it's actually generally pretty fair. So these are my halves. I have a boatload of random cards in here. And then the cards that I want. And here's here's all these cards. And the interesting thing is I will be able to say what I'm willing to pay for cards. So right now I'm looking to pick up Gush, and I'm willing to pay 60% of the value. And that means for a near mint copy, I would actually only pay three dollars and twenty six cents, even though it's a five dollar and forty four cent card, which is kind of cool. Now, since I'm only paying sixty percent, there's probably not going to be a whole lot of people that are going to be shipping me gushes. But hey, maybe some people will. It's not all that uncommon to pay somewhere around fifty to seventy percent for commons. Gush is a pretty popular common, so that may not be feasible. But you know, something kind of cool is they actually have information I'm not gonna go through all of it right now but if you sign up and create an account and you just want to explore cards and kinda of get some market information for free without having to pay anything uh, you can look at the little card sphere economy by clicking on these cards once you add them to your want list or your have list either way click on gush it'll show you like you know basically what what people have been willing to to pay for gushes what they've been trading for, what some of the top offers are for Gush right now, and you can check this information out on all the cards. So it's kind of cool just to kind of see. Uh, right now on Cardsphere there's 8,000 users, which may not sound like a lot, but it's been pretty cool to watch because every single week the users keep growing 
there's you know the amount of trades going on it's it's just you can see the growth all the time and it's pretty neat and hey I mean as I mean the the thing I care about is people actually send me cards I I post offers and I get cards and every day I'm able to go on and if I have time I can usually find some cards that I have that somebody wants that where they're offering something that I think is reasonable so I'm both shipping and receiving cards just about every single day and it's cool because you can do it however you want I started out by depositing some money but you don't have to put a dollar in if you want you can just go on card sphere click on what you have put all your cards in be sure these cards are listed as active it's cool because there's a lot of tools to both manage your haves and your wants where you can either pause or activate cards that you want or that you are willing to trade so for uh, I don't know for copies of spirit mantle if I want to pause these because I suddenly decide that I don't want to trade them then you know I'm free to do that there's nothing stopping me so you have a lot of tools at your disposal you can control how much you're willing to pay for cards you can you know also use this as a card inventory system to keep up with your collection which is kinda of sweet also they have tools where you can import and export out card lists so if you already had all your cards in some other trading service like Puka Trade and you don't want to retype everything back in again um, yeah, there's there's methods so this is my haves add cards go to actions and I just go to import and I can actually uh, import a CSV file uh, generated by Deckbox, Doverlands, Magic Card Market, TCG Player, Echo MTG, Puka Trade. If you've already got all your cards listed somewhere else, you can just choose a CSV file to import and bada bing bada boom, you'll have all your cards uh, you know jammed into uh, into Cardsphere. So yeah it's it's pretty sweet. Uh, by the way I apologize guys I've been a little under the weather but I didn't want to stop that from getting a few updates out uh, so you know forgive me if I sound a little bit off but yeah so you've got your haves your wants you see that you might see I don't know there's a little indication that I'm in the process of sending some packages so I've got some cards I've committed to send and as soon as I get done uh, doing this little update I'm gonna get those cards together and and get them all ready to go and get them in the mail so yeah um, it's pretty cool there's a lot of different features uh, available for uh, you can use this as a tool to sell cards you can use it as a tool just to buy cards or you can use it as a tool for asymmetrical trading which means that you sell you put all your cards into your halves you sell your cards to one person and then you use the money that you get to turn around and buy cards from other people and you don't have to do any haggling or negotiating with anybody um, I've, I've exchanged messages with other users it's generally been a very positive experience and the messages that I've exchanged have just been to have good clear communication on card conditions as much as I can uh, and I'm you know I'm learning different uh, different ways to, to get better and better at that as well um, so yeah I've learned a lot of cool interesting little ways to make that experience go smoothly and there's some good resources to communicate with other users as well but I you know I haven't done any haggling with anybody um, which is kinda cool I just I just list what I'm willing to pay other people list what they're willing to pay and the market sorts it all out when I see stuff that I think is fair I send people cards and when I list prices that other people think are okay with them they send me cards and so yeah there's none of that you don't have to do any like shady wheeling and dealing or whatever uh, so yeah that's there's just so many great awesome things about card sphere and I, I know I mentioned this already, but I especially like the fact that you could start with no dollars in, just put your collection on there uh, of cards that you don't want, and then ship those cards out, build up your card sphere balance, and then you're off to basically trading cards. And card sphere only takes a 1% cut whenever you sell cards, which is amazing. If you're just going to buy cards, you. You don't you don't have to pay anything. This is amazing. If you're just going to buy cards on Cardsphere, like you'll buy the cards, and it's just like eBay or TCG Player or anything like that, where you don't actually have to pay anything for the service. You just pay for the cards. Except it's even better because you're typically, I mean, almost always going to get these cards cheaper on Cardsphere than you're going to get the cards 
uh, anywhere else because you're buying from other players. You're not buying from online retailers. So you might not be getting quite wholesale prices, but sometimes you will. I mean, on some of these less popular cards, uh, you know, a lot of stores will not pay much of anything at all for cards that are not really hot and popular. So the buy lists are just going to be like pennies on the dollar, which means you can offer, you know, for some cards, offering to pay 60% of the retail value, that's an amazing deal for you. And it may also just be a whole lot more than anybody else is willing to pay for some of these more obscure, you know, four or five dollar cards. Now, granted, as cards get more expensive, you know, if we're talking about a hundred dollar card, then you're probably going to get closer to paying full price on that card. Uh, but if you're somebody like me who's into playing popper decks and you want to amass a lot of commons, which even some of those are starting to get more popular, but yeah, there's still plenty of commons that I can definitely pick up at very reasonable percentages. And a lot of the random commander, you know, $2 to $8, $10 cards that I ship off, I usually get somewhere between 70 to 85% value on those. So I'm not getting 100% value. But that's perfectly fine because a lot of the random, you know, popper stuff that I'm picking up, I'm only paying, you know, 50 to 80% value on as well. So it's it works out just fine for me. Uh, sometimes I'll even be willing to pay more for more popular items and I'm willing to pay a premium for those things but the hilarious thing is when I say pay a premium that just means you know around 90 to 95 percent maybe a hundred percent but if you know if I'm paying full price but it's I'm not paying it out of money out of my pocket really at this point all my stuff on card sphere at this juncture is just being sustained from me basically trading out cards in my collection that I just don't care about. And that's amazing that I can take a lot of the random stuff that I have in my, my physical collection that I don't care about and I can turn it into more cards and cool things I want for my popper decks. So there's all kinds of incredible options available with Cardsphere. You can you know take cards in your collection that aren't popular with your local scene and then you can out them on Cardsphere and then work your way into things that are more popular. Now, I mean, this does require patience, and, you know, there's just a certain random element to it, but, I mean, I've been able to trade off just lots of random, you know, commander-type stuff that is definitely not like the new hotness in standard or modern or anything like that. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you can actually get on here, and you don't have to have, you don't have to have, like, Fetchlands and Shocklands and Liliana's and Jace. You, you don't have to have all that. You can, you know, I'm, I've got, <laughs> I've got some, you know, like random stuff, really random stuff that I managed to trade. I've got plenty of random stuff that nobody's expressed interest in yet, but I have a pretty large assortment of random janky stuff, and just about every day I'm able to find somebody who wants something that I have. So yeah, it's it's been pretty sweet for me, and uh, I highly recommend you check it out. Uh, again, even if you don't even want to buy or sell anything on Cardsphere, I think it's an interesting free resource of free information because once you sign up and create your account, you can get some sense of just by clicking and exploring cards and seeing what people have really been paying for these things on, you know, card player, to, you know, like card player trades. There's some stores on here too, I think, that use Cardsphere just as a way of doing another another place to have a buy list going basically uh, but the cool thing is if if you know some smaller stores are doing that I mean you can too I mean if you just wanna build a massive Magic the Gathering collection on the cheap you're willing to be patient and just kinda pick up whatever you can get then you could offer to pay you know basically maybe sixty to seventy percent for an enormous variety of different cards and you're not gonna get them all at once but Every week, somebody will ship you some cards uh, at a pretty sweet discount. And, you know, unlike a random eBay or TCG player sale where, hey, you can get, you know, $15 off a $75 purchase or you can get 5% off, wow! Yeah, no, like on on uh, Cardsphere, getting 10 to 20, even 30, even 40% off, especially if we're talking about cards in the you know one to ten dollar range this is not unusual even cards in the you know twenty thirty forty dollar range getting ten or twenty percent off is it's really not that not that unusual at all um, 
and again when you when you go to sell your cards you know you might you know feel frustrated by the fact that people might only be willing to pay you know 70 percent of the value on some of your random you know five dollar cards but when you consider that you can now you know take that and maybe pay 85 percent value and pick up fetch lands or sweet cards like that uh, or even just trade into other maybe you're like me and you want to trade some random commander ish type stuff into some popper cards so you trade the cards you have off at 70 percent of value and then you pick up commons at 70 percent of value and you're you're getting equal fair value basically and uh, yeah there's just all kinds of interesting things you can do I've been I've been having zero problems uh, having people send me cards um, in fact I've been having people fulfilling my want list so quickly that I've had to go to my want list and just put a whole bunch of cards on pause because my balance has just been getting drained so quickly that I'm having to throw the brakes on and I the only thing that I really offer usually uh, for unstable lands I'll offer more than I think I'll usually offer you know between 90 and 100 percent on unstable lands just depending on how things are going but that's just because I need a whole lot of them and I've been trading for a lot of them and I'm starting to slow that down too but for most of the commons I pick up I will offer 50 percent to 80 percent and probably an average of like 70 percent so that means all the commons I'm picking up I have definitely been getting cheaper than uh, than TCG player and the interesting thing is you know like the way Cardsphere works is it automatically prices in the card condition where if you were to pick up a heavy play copy you're only going to pay 60 percent of what a near mint copy would cost but then that's further discounted if you're only willing to pay 60 percent so you're like paying 60 percent of the 60 percent if you're picking up heavy play copies so on the common stuff I'm always mindful to put in that I'm willing to pick up heavy play moderate play slight play on a lot of stuff just because if it's a deck that I'm going to shove in a popper deck anyway that I'm just going to have fun with I don't care what condition it's in I'm not I'm not buying it to resell it I just want to have fun so yeah card sphere uh, I highly recommend it uh, again not because you know they're paying me bajillions of dollars I recommend it because I believe in it and I'm having tons of fun buying selling and trading cards on card sphere it's it's really allowed me to build up uh, help me build a lot of popper decks and I'll tell you another sweet you know just to close out here I save this sweet nugget for those of you who actually are listening to the entire thing because I know a lot of people they're just gonna listen to the first few minutes and then tune out so for those of you I saved a little nugget here at the end as popper was really starting to ramp up over these last few months I was picking up quite a few copies of chainers edict for two and three bucks like m multiple play sets because I I'm one of those ridiculous people that has you know an obsession with black decks so I have like two mono black popper decks a white black popper deck like three or four blue black popper decks a red black popper deck and I got chainers edicts in all of these popper decks so I don't even know how many chainers edicts I have I'm not even trying to spec into them but I just have all these copies have changed. I have so many that they're getting so expensive. I actually think I'm going to go out, throw some on eBay, uh, or hey, Cards Fair. If you know, if people start to catch up and make reasonable offers on these, I don't know what I'm going to do. I, you know, I'll trade them, sell them, whatever. Locally, Cards Fair, whatever avenue I feel like, uh, through some methodology, I'm going to go ahead and, and move some of these Chainers Edicts because they're just getting so so valuable it's blowing my mind I'm not going to move all of them because I'm going to keep some copies to play with but I'm going to be able to use those chainers edicts that I was picking up for just a few bucks and I'll find some way to out enough of those to basically pay for my popper decks which is to me I find hilarious um, especially uh, you know with all the people who have been talking about like oh if you get in on popper you're throwing your money away like I don't know like uh, I think if I had bought it on modern that I would be just hemorrhaging value all the time <laughs> but popper has been treating me good so yeah good times everybody check out cards here highly recommend it and uh, 
I don't know. Have fun. Uh, if, if you're able to pick up a sweet trade, leave me a feedback and let me know. Peace.